It's March. It's warm. Let's mow. Hello, welcome to Monthly Moan for the Slav 25th channel. I'm Terry A. Abbott. And it's the end of March. And spring is springing, as they say. The temperature today is a lovely balmy 20 degrees outside. 24 down south. That's going to cause some problems. So what are we talking about? Women. They don't feel safe. They don't feel safe on the streets. They don't feel safe in schools even. Let's talk about that. Also, Brexit. Yep, Brexit. The never-ending saga that is Brexit. We will talk about Covid. We have to talk about Covid. It's still around. It ain't going anywhere at the moment. It's getting better in this country, not so elsewhere. And we'll talk about anything else that just happens to be in the news. So without further ado, let's get on with the March Moon. A report out today says that the police acted appropriately at the Sarah Everett vigil. Although it was a PR disaster for the Met Police, the sight of burly police officers manhandling women at a vigil that was highlighting violence against women. Not a good look. But this vigil was highlighting an ever-growing and increasing problem. It is coming to a point where women are actually afraid to go out at night time in case they may be the victims of a sexual assault. And they're becoming increasingly victims of sexual harassment. It seems to be a case of full-on misogyny taking place. But hey, why not if the crime is one to get away with? If the justice system is taking it so lightly that less than one in five cases of rape will actually end up with a conviction, you know something is wrong with the system and it's inherently Lord. Also, there is nowhere safe. You would think the schools were relatively safe, but no, 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 no. A website everyone's invited has catalogued 11,000 testimonies of young girls, some as young as nine, who have anonymously sent information to the website about what has happened to them at school. One of the cases was quite disturbing. It was a young woman who was raped. Now, this was never reported because they didn't want to damage the life chances of the lad involved. You see, he was a bright pupil. He was going to get good grades. He was a prefect. He was a model student. They want to harm his chances. Harm his chances? What the fuck are you talking about? The guy is a sexual predator and a rapist. Nothing fucking harming chances about it. This guy needs to see a fucking judge. Not fucking... Uh, be molly coddled and say, oh well, never mind. What about the girl involved? What about her life chances? This bloody poor girl's distraught. She's just been the victim of a most heinous crime. And you have said, fuck it. We're not going to do anything. That's just fucking mental. 97% of women have said that they have had some sort of sexual harassment, assault, or in some cases rape. 97%? That's nearly every woman you meet. Well, even my wife has come across sexual harassment in her time. More often than not, it's violence against women. And if you've got nothing to stop them, i.e. there is hardly any punishment, then They'll keep doing it. We need a coordinated strategy between the schools, between parents, between the criminal justice system, between social media platforms. A concerted effort to bring this under control, to stamp it out where possible, to make young lads understand about relationships, because a lot of them aren't getting that 
education. And the first thing they know about sex is they see a porn site. Something on social media pops up. Somebody tells them something stupid. And they get the wrong idea. They must be told that what they see on like a porn site is complete bollocks. And not to believe it. And to form proper relationships with women. I mean, this is not saying to blokes, you can't ask a woman out. You still can ask women out. Just don't go to the woman and go, I want to go out with you, 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 I want to go out with you all the time. Because, you know, if you've got the answer, no, then it's no. And, you know, don't bother. Friend zone may be, but nothing more. You know, that's where you are. Yeah, we've got to get this under control because, as I say, 97%? That's 97% too much. Who said that Brexit was a good idea? Brexit was a fucking lousy idea. Trade is sort of getting back to a a normal level but we won't really know how much of a level it's back to because you know like for like from last year to this year doesn't really tell the story we really need to have it probably from next year looking back at 2019 levels because you know 2020 21 is, is a write-off with, with what's been going on with covid but 20 if we have it from 2022 to 2019 we'll then really be able to see the stark contrast in the fact that trade is down we have people in this country who are having to have horrendous red tape to send things to Europe that they never had beforehand horrendous red tape to send things to Northern Ireland because of well, the Northern Ireland protocol that's also a ball ache as well I feel sorry for the people in Northern Ireland they're, they're, they can't even order things from fucking Amazon because it won't be delivered correctly it's just a nightmare absolute bloody nightmare you really are in trouble you really are in trouble up that area Oh, and here's a good one of a proof that we had a bad idea leaving Europe is what Biden is wanting to do to the UK. Put tariffs on us because we think of a digital tax against the social media and uh, companies, online companies who have made a killing during the pandemic and have also not been paying their taxes. So he wanted a digital tax so that they, you know, they, they make a lot of money in this country, we, they should pay. And, oh, Biden is against that, just like Trump was, by the way. There's no difference there. And he wants to put tariffs on UK goods of around about 25% to offset the cost of the digital tax. Very nice of you, Biden, you bastard. But, you know, you're a fucking country, so not, nothing that I can do about it. No, the bastard doesn't try it against fucking Europe, though. No, no, no. Trump was idiotic enough to go against Europe. Biden, showing me what was sensible, goes, No, Europe's a fucking big market, i.e. it's as big as we are. Yeah, a trade war against Europe would be a devastating thing for the United States. Kicking Britain, because now we're just a little fucking island on our own, is fine. That proves where it is. Not good to be on your own in days of super blocks of fucking areas. You know, America is a massive fucking market. Europe is a massive fuck-off market. China is a massive fuck-off market. The Asian group is a massive fuck-off market. We are little Britain all on our own. Yeah, little kicking boy. Because, you know, these, com these countries are bigger than us and we can't do anything about it now. So we have to take everything that we're told. You will do this. Yes, we will. You will do this. Yes, we will. Taking back control? Bullshit. Being fucked over is more likely. This is what you get. And then these poor bastards bleating in in Spain about being kicked out. They're immigrants. They're coming to come back. They're being repatriated to Britain. Why? Well, maybe because they didn't fill in the paperwork when they were over there because they were too exceptional because they were British. You know, we have this British exceptionalism. The rules don't apply to us. Well, I'll tell you something. The rules do apply to you. And you're just finding out why. Yeah. Okay. But send back to Britain. Obviously, they hate the sun. And they want to get back to the good old reign of the UK. Yay. Great. But that's what you get for Brexit.
And things will continue just to trundle on. We won't hear much about it because, you know, at the moment, COVID is the main story for everyone. Or Meghan, Harry, the Royals. It's the usual case. The Brexit's on the back burner for the news cycle, but it's happening. It's kicking off all over the place. And we've got major problems right across the board. And they're stacking up for the government. Soon, when COVID's out of the way, Brexit will suddenly become noticeable. And I think then they will have to really explain why it's all gone wrong especially seeing they're supposed to be so brexit friendly do remember that boris johnson before this kicked off wrote two letters to publish one was for europe one was against europe and then he looked at which one would give him a better chance of becoming prime minister well on hindsight i suppose he chose the right route to be a full-on brexiteer but is his heart really in it? Well, when you write two letters, you can't really do, can you? Almost 31 million people have now had their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And 4 million have had the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, as of the end of this month, priority will be given to giving people their second doses and not the first dose due to a shortage of vaccines. One of the reasons is a huge shipment from India, which we were supposed to be getting, has been held by the Indian government as they are having a huge spike of COVID-19 in their country. So a bit of vaccine nationalism is taking place there. We can't say anything about it because we've had our own vaccine nationalism in this country, which pissed Europe off completely. Although we rightly did say that we were first in line for the vaccines because, hey, you know, we put the order in first, it still pissed the Europeans off. They had sent many hundreds of thousands of doses to us and we had not returned any in favour to them. Although, saying that, the one we're producing, the AstraZeneca vaccine, seems to be having problems in Europe at the case with Germany at the moment, who have actually stopped all vaccinations of AstraZeneca to anybody under the age of 50. You start worrying about that AstraZeneca vaccine sometimes, but, you know, hey, the, the uh, scientists and the experts say that it's perfectly safe. There's been a small number of cases of people getting blood clots, but it's within what would be normally associated with old age anyway, so... There is, it's swings and roundabouts. Most people, I say, I know people have had the AstraZeneca vaccine. They're perfectly all right. They've certainly not had any blood clots. So, you know, I think we are talking about a minority. And I think we are talking about just a normal, natural group that would get it anyway. Now, we're unlocking in the UK. Great, because, you know, cases are down. And hopefully... We will have normality by June, they reckon. 21st of June is the date when Boris Johnson says that we should be able to get back to a sort of normal lifestyle. I'll believe it when I see it. It is good at the moment that we do have low cases in the UK. But there are still people dying. There are still several thousand people being infected. So it's still here. Still roaming around. So, you know, you've really got to stay on your guard. Social distancing, wear masks where possible, you know, rule of six, but keep away from people. Well, here comes the hot weather for a couple of days. Now, hot weather, this country, we go insane. We go fucking mental. We are absolutely insane in this country. We are total nutcases. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Well, mad dogs and mad Englishmen. And I've got to admit that this country, 90% are mad when it comes to hot weather. The problem is they all went to the beaches, they all went to the parks, and they were all crammed together again. We had this last year. Fucking assholes. Look, I know COVID is not as transmissible outdoors, but it's if you are close together, you can still get it. You can still catch COVID. 
It can still be transmitted over the air by somebody shouting with all this sputum coming out of their mouths. You know, with all lovely, lovely, lovely COVID coming out, spraying you with droplets of COVID and you going, oh, yeah, yeah. oh shit, I've got COVID. Uh. Yeah, be careful. And then, of course, they just left the shit everywhere, all over the beaches, all over the parks. Like, we, we reverted backwards. You fucking dicks. Bins! Take your rubbish home with you in a bag. And they said the parks looked like they'd been hit by a fucking bomb. Like, the, like the, the scummiest twats on the planet had been there. Maybe they had been. But fucking hell, what a mess. Clean up after yourselves, you bastards. And stay apart. We're trying to fight a virus that still likes people to be close together. The less we do to mitigate the virus, the longer it will take to unlock the country. You want to unlock the country by the 21st of June. You ain't going to do it if you're all getting together in March, when there's still a prevalence of the virus around. You'll end up getting more people infected, and then suddenly... That 21st of June number disappears off into the fucking distance because, so sorry, too many cases. Sudden spike in March through assholes. Oy. Don't learn, do you? And the less contact, the more we can unlock. And the more we can unlock, the better it'll be. But we have to play our part just as much as anybody else. The vaccine helps, but social distancing helps as well. All in all, keep them together in concert. We can fight this virus and hammer it down. Well, let's see. That's it on COVID. Sydney Powell. You remember her? Hung around with Rudy Giuliani. Was on about fraud, like Mike Lindell, you know, the My Pillow guy, who came out with a ridiculous video which was total bollocks. Yeah, these people, you remember them? Oh, it was it was fun times way back at the end of last year after Donald Trump had lost the election and you were all screaming it was all fraud. Yeah, we remember you guys. You were going to unleash, you were going to unleash the Kraken. Remember? Yeah, it was all. A Venezuelan threat and Hugo Chavez was involved and Hugo Chavez has been dead for fucking god knows how many years. Yeah, it was a Dominion. They were all all Venezuelan run companies, even though Dominion was founded in Canada. But you know, they were all yeah, Canada's near Venezuela. Uh they're all in on it. Yeah. Dominion suing you. So your defence is Oh, I was talking complete bollocks. And no one would have believed me. <laughs> to claim that you were just talking complete nonsense and no one would have believed you. How the fuck is that a defence? Because, unfortunately, the block on that is, sorry love, lots of people did believe you because there was a fucking insurrection on the 6th of January. Yeah, people believed you. They believed you. Well, as I say, Dominion are going to sue you. And they're suing all of you. I hope they fucking bankrupt a lot of you. Good luck on that one, as a defence. And that's it for another moan. If you like what I do, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Comments as well. Please feel free to. Sometimes the comments don't turn up and I don't know why. And until the next time, have a great one, stay safe, and bye-bye.